<laughs> it's very pretty. Uh, Felicia has like this pearl number, which I'm going to guess with the budget. They're like the cheapest party city. Now that I know that, those are dollar store like yeah. play pearls. <laughs> <laughs> like the kind my grandmother would buy for me when we went to the dollar store. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Art of Costume Blogcast. I'm Elizabeth Joy Glass. And I'm Spencer Williams. Elizabeth, what's good? Oh, so much, so much. It's, <laughs> it's finally hot here. Oh, that's good. You love that. Yeah, I do. It was a little jarring though. We went from like still needing a light jacket weather to like I am sweating just like overnight. <laughs> so that <laughs> was a little abrupt and uncalled for <laughs> yeah but i've learned i can't have what i want weather wise in my life so i'm just rolling with it and just watching all the tv shows i've watched so many tv shows really? <laughs> recently <laughs> yes dude so i started and finished um shining veil okay uh very weird i thought it was gonna be like funny it wasn't i started gaslit and Under the Banner of Heaven. Okay. And then, oh my gosh, there was another one. Was it the Halo TV series? Because I just finished that. No, I've seen bits of that. <laughs> Did it get a second season? It's supposed to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, not that, like, I am no big Halo fan. I, like, played it, like, back in the day when yeah. my brother had it on one of the, like, original Xboxes. And I was watching it, and I was like... This seems good, but also like not as good as it could have been. Yeah, I don't I don't know what it is. I it's they're suffering from this problem where like the video game fans are being very controlling of it. So mm -hmm. if they do anything that's different from the video games, the audience gets really upset. Um and they did a lot of things differently, but mm -hmm. they straight up were like, This isn't like a direct like story from the video game <laughs> yeah because why should like that doesn't make sense yeah they're like you guys already played the game so you know what happens it's it's all cgi anyways you might as well just play the game again <laughs> yeah and also like so i've seen parts of it because my dad is watching it oh nice <laughs> like get your dad on um, the line <laughs> i want to speak to your dad <laughs> unfortunately he's not currently home oh. um but he, he's like liking it but he feels like it's like it's trying to not I forget exactly what he said, but basically he like feels like it's in this like in between area of like not being adult content, but also not being like family friendly is basically like what he was getting at. And he was also like there's weird stuff like they have the um the in-game helper woman. Cortana. <laughs> yeah, Cortana. <laughs> he was like, I don't, he's like, I don't get the purpose of her because he's never played the game. So I kind of had oh. to like explain that to him. Yeah. But he was like, they probably could have left that out or left her just as like a voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love her part, but there's just a lot of like, there's maybe like four or five filler episodes. I and mean, I know the showrunners mm -hmm. wouldn't say they're filler, but they're filler. I mean, they're yeah. just walking around base talking. There's three episodes that has actual action, like, fighting in it. Three. And I'm like, I don't remember doing a lot of talking in a video game, but I, like, <laughs> still love the show. Yeah. Like, it's like a space soap opera, which I appreciate. Okay, I'll have to definitely watch it, because I love my soap operas. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't understand TV shows that have filler episodes that aren't airing week to week on network television. Right. Even those, I'm like, I this is why I don't watch network television, because... There's too many filler episodes. But, um, oh my gosh, this is the other thing I watch that has no filler episodes. Outer Range? I've never heard of any of these shows that you mentioned. <laughs> 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 Except Under the Banner of Heaven, but I still can't put my finger what it's actually about, though. It's, I think it's a, I think it's based on a true crime. Um, but it's within, like, the Mormon world. Oh, that's the Andrew Garfield one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. There's that gas. But what's, what's the other one you're talking about? Outer Range. It's real weird. It has um has Thanos. <laughs> okay, Josh what's Brolin. His name? <laughs> Josh Brolin. <laughs> and um, it has Patrick from Schitt's Creek. Oh, 
Okay, I don't remember his I'm name. I'm now terrified of the man. Oh, I love Man's that. got range. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like this weird sci-fi about this guy, sci-fi show about this guy and his family. And they have like a black hole through time on their ranch. Okay. It's very strange. <laughs> it's very strange, but I kind of loved it. Sounds like you're watching all the strange things right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Shining Veil. I watched it because it has um Courtney Cox in it. Nice. Scary. It was so scary. I was oh, like, oh, okay. I do know what you're talking about on that one too. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw the previews and I was like, oh, this looks like a fun, kind of like spooky, but probably like sarcastically funny, like ghost show. <laughs> scary <laughs> very creepy <laughs> well i'm currently just started rupaul's drag race all stars season seven it's an all winners season so i'm watching the hell out of that oh i'm sure you are i'm sure you are which kind of feels like a direct connection to what we're about to start watching at this moment yes <laughs> spencer what did we watch this week we watched one of my favorite movies the adventures of priscilla queen of the desert elizabeth i'm dying to know what you thought because i'm going to bet a hundred dollars you've never seen this before i never even heard about this till you were like <laughs> we need to do this and i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> and you were like hugo weaving's in it and i was like okay like love a hugo weaving in a film right it was good i liked it i really enjoyed it it was like it had that weird like 90s very dry british humor yeah <laughs> about it that i had a hard time like keeping track with sometimes <laughs> but it was so much fun it was so fun for a brief second it makes me want to move to australia but not really because everything there wants to eat me and you think you're hot now yeah no i want to do it i said a brief second um but i just love this film it's so colorful it brings me so much joy mm -hmm. and yet it has like some like heartbreak built into it but you kind of work through it and you know, like the whole one of the main reasons why I got into costuming was actually my love for drag and drag culture. I worked with a lot of drag queens in my past. Um, I mean, I still do. I work at work.com also on the side. Um, so I'm always at like drag con doing interviews and whatnot. Um, but this film was one of the like one of my entry points into drag culture. <laughs> and it all kind of like circles back to us doing this podcast and the art of costume. Because uh, this film won an Oscar for costume design. Oh. It sure did. Wow, I believe it. Oh my gosh, it was good. <laughs> so Elizabeth, why don't you jump into a summary? Let's just get into it. I will. The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, follows two drag queens, Mitzi and Felicia, and a transgender woman, Bernadette, as they journey across the Australian outback in a tour bus that they have named Priscilla, while performing for enthusiastic crowds and homophobic locals, the performers learn the truth about why they took the job, threatening their act and friendship. <laughs> you had a little bit of an Australian accent jump out. Did I? <laughs> what do you said? Australian Outback. <laughs> I don't think I did, but okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just in my head. I don't know. <laughs> Great summary, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you for writing it, Spencer. <laughs> if you have not seen this since the year 1994, go watch it because you haven't seen it in exactly 27 years because that was the year I was born. Ooh. So maybe get on that. Nice. She just did math right in front of me. That was impressive. I should hope I still remember <laughs> my age. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elizabeth, let's go behind the wardrobe on Priscilla. This film won an Oscar in 1995 for costume design. Yes, it did. So I'm really excited to talk about this. 1995, the year I was born. Hello. Um, this film was directed by Stephen Elliott and it was costume designed by co-designers Tim Chappell and Lizzie Gardner. Have we ever had co-costume designers? Yes, for Dune. Oh, right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Another one of our favorites. I was real excited. Um, notable work... This was both Tim's and Lizzie's first costume designer credit. Ooh. Tim recently has been doing a mass singer and dancing with the stars in Australia. Um, Lizzie 
Uh, she's done Hacksaw Ridge. She did Ghost Rider, the 2007 version with Nicolas Cage. That's a little questionable in terms of plot, but the costumes were sick. <laughs> <laughs> and The Railway Man. Um, but after they did this film in 2011, Tim and Lizzie went on to win a Tony for costume design for designing a musical for uh, the adventures of Priscilla, oh Queen of the Desert. Oh my there's a musical? There is, and I've been <gasps> dying to see it, but I've just never made it happen. But they went on to do the costumes for that too, and they just racked in another award, which is Let's pretty badass. Let's go see it. Let's go see it. That would be so fun. Is it in New York? I mean, it was at some point. I don't know if it is currently. Mm. Yeah. Figure this out. Yeah. I mean, it's been more than a decade since it was released. So I'm sure it's been everywhere. Um, so it was said that director Stephen Elliott, he said that he got the inspiration for this film just walking down uh, the streets of New Orleans and saw uh, feathers from a drag queen's headpiece just rolling down the empty streets post Mardi Gras. You and I have been to New Orleans, so we know what that's like. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Lots we of do. feathers, <laughs> lots of bees. And he's like, I have an idea. Um, Elizabeth, brace yourself. I had to double check this number multiple times. The budget for costumes in this film is staggering. $20,000. I know you're thinking, how is this possible? I've double checked it multiple times. Their budget was basically non-existent to the point where Tim says, if you look at the costumes up close and in person, he recommends you don't because they're falling apart. <laughs> Elizabeth is shocked right now. That is so hard to believe because the kind of costumes they have in that, that movie, they're like a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars a piece in real life. If you want to go buy yourself a really nice, like a drag queen costume or just like any like show showy girl type costume, those things are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I, like they're, I they're very expensive. <laughs> I know. I know this doesn't make any sense, but like I've double checked and triple checked this. I have not found. Did they like not have a staff? Was it just the two of them making every single piece of clothing? I mean, essentially, we'll get into some of these costume breakdowns, which, by the way, um, the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia, they have like a Priscilla Queen of the Desert digital exhibition where I got a lot of the information this week from. What? And they like break down a process to some of these costumes like we're going to talk about that sandals costume like all those flip-flops came from like target for like 20 dollars. <laughs> like they literally this is a make it work type of situation like that just made me very nervous that budget <laughs> i'm just like how'd they do it? <laughs> it i know it made me nervous too and i kept checking it um but also it speaks to the craftsmanship of tim and lizzie I know this to be true. Tim made costumes for drag queens in college, which is how he was discovered to do these. Um, and it's very common for costume designers for drag culture to really work with what they have. Mm -hmm. um, budgets are usually very, very small. Uh, so I believe it. It just sounds really crazy because usually we're like, oh, two million dollars. That's nothing. This is $20,000, so this is like a quarter. You know? This is them, like, sawing a penny apart to try and pay for everything. <laughs> like. yeah. It's real crazy. Um, and uh, as you can probably guess, the environment on the show was not at all helpful. Um, they said multiple times that many of the costumes were destroyed. Multiple times. They were in the outback on a bus. And they said many of the costumes were in you know, in storage, transportation, and they all would melt together. Um, I believe it was the costume designer who said at one point they opened up a box of costumes in it and he pulled out all the costumes as as one big melted cube. Yes, he said they all fused together in the box and they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it's a miracle that this film even happened let alone oscars for the both of them it's it's insane to me that's mind you one of the awards that year and one of the nominees was little women by colleen atwood so like this whole thing Ooh. this whole thing wow. is crazy yeah <laughs> 
Like all those stories just made me so nervous. I need a little break. Let's get some water. (laughs) And then let's dive into the desert with them. Let's do it. Hi, this is Dan, audio engineer of the Blogcast. Just wanted to let you know that if you'd like to support the show, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash the art of costume. There we post unheard bloopers, highlights, and bonus episodes just for our patrons. Make sure to check out the description for all of our links. And thank you for all of your support. For a show. I'm always ready for a show. Let's do it. Because Mitzi and Felicia, they're here to give us a show. Uh so fun. They start off with the first nev the first number, I never been to me. I love this song. Um, I've only ever heard it in the context of this film, but it's been on my Spotify ever since I heard it. <laughs> Elizabeth's like, I never heard a song in my life. <laughs> I've never heard this song in my life. Um, <laughs> but I loved it. It was so like, it like, I like that it threw you right into it. Cause you have Hugo weaving there in this like beautiful sequin dress. And I didn't even realize that was him at first. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I didn't realize he was the main character. And I was like, oh, this must be the main character. And then like, as it goes on, I'm like, wait wait, hold on a second. That's Hugo Weaving. <laughs> <laughs> the transformation is staggering. Um, Hugo Weaving looks great. There are some things about this film that, um, you know, like I think if we were to do this film today, it would definitely be a lot different. Like, for example, we would have LGBTQ characters actually playing the main characters. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also another scene that we're probably even going to skip with um, – an actress win some ping pong balls, which oh, I'm like, that, that just did not even cringe. I was like, oh, yeah, that scene could have been that removed. Kind of gross. There's <laughs> that was really no gross. reason for that scene. Just kind of gross and felt like a little, little racist stereotypy. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, it's 1994, and Hugo Weaving and Guy Pierce absolutely kill it in this role. Yes. It was so fun. Yes. And can I say? Felicia's first little pearl number might have been my favorite from the whole thing. Because <laughs> so I was just good. like, "Yes, girl, you look so good. I want that. I it's don't know what so I would do good. with it, but I want to. I want it. <laughs> you could totally pull that off, Elizabeth. I, I see could. It. I just don't know where I would wear it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go it's to New Orleans again. <laughs> <laughs> it's very pretty. Uh, Felicia has like this pearl number, which I'm going to guess with the budget. They're like the cheapest party city. Now that I know that, those are dollar store like yeah. clay <laughs> pearls. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the kind my grandmother would buy for me when we went to the dollar store. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, it's it's so funny though. It like reminds me of like very typical 90s. This is very 90s drag. Um, especially Australian drag. They have a little bit of a different drag scene. Oh. Hugo Weaving is very interesting. It says his character is very campy with like the very teased up hair and like the very interesting makeup. It's just very 90s drag and I love it. Yeah, I was going to say this like, because I'm not as familiar with drag. I've like gone to like a couple drag shows and I, I would watch... RuPaul's Drag Race when I lived with you, but like not <laughs> super familiar. And I was like, this seems very different. This seems very different. This definitely seems like, like right before drag really got like super popular and popped off. But right. Well, drag really got popular in like the 80s and 90s, but ever since then, it's had like this renaissance period. But now, like, all the new drag queens are all like, you know, younger and younger than us like starting in their teens and they're like kind of like i don't want to say like the instagram type drag queen but they're very like you know like they're walking on runway shows and Mm -hmm. you know doing like real high fashiony moments so 
the Mitzi Del Bras and the Felicia Jolly Goodfellows are a little bit of like a a generation that's gone by, I'll say, in okay. the drag world. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so let's talk about that <laughs> chandelier look, which I wish we got more time, but Mitzi Del Bras. Yeah. And like, I think, I don't know if it's a flashback or like Mitzi's idea of what actually happened, but it's like a little bit fantasized, I should say, (laughs) with this chandelier look. It's so good. Yes. I I feel like it's probably kind of what happened, but also kind of like fantasy. Yeah. Because I'm like, maybe he was wearing something similar to that when she went into labor and he just kind of ran over there, but I doubt it was so big that he got stuck in the hall. <laughs> like, Right. Maybe that's what he thought it was going to look like, but actually look nothing like this. Yeah. I don't know. Or like looking <laughs> back on it, that's probably how he felt. <laughs> right. <laughs> but honestly, the first time we see this, because it's like, you don't know why he's in the hospital dressed like that. The first time we see this, I, I was just like, so confused i was so (laughs) confused i was like what is happening here why is he in a hospital like right it's one of my favorite looks it's so stunning if you look at it like up close to personal once again i don't know how they pulled it off with the budget Mm -hmm. that they have um that's why i keep double checking the number to make sure i'm reading it right i'm adding enough zeros but i am Um, Because it's very (sighs) stunning. Yeah, because I'm like, even on the cheap, that had to have cost a couple hundred dollars to make that. (laughs) Which doesn't sound like a lot for something like that. But when you only have $20,000, that's a good chunk of your budget. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I'm like, the numbers don't add up. They had to have gone over budget. (laughs) (laughs) They must have. Something. Um, yeah, it's very stunning. It reminds me of Katy Perry's Met Gala look a couple years ago for the camp theme. She wore a chandelier. Oh, I bet oh, you she right. drew, she must have drew inspiration from the ventures of Priscilla Queen to Desert. Probably. Oh my gosh, the funeral. Is it dark to say that, like, I kind of love funeral fashion a little bit? I know that's kind of morbid, but I don't think so. Because it's a I love, thing. It's a thing. It's been a thing for hundreds and thousands of years. Yeah, like I love good funeral fashion, <laughs> which is crazy. But like <laughs> all these movies we watch, whenever there's a funeral, people are always dress up for it. And this movie is no exception. Yes. I'm like, this is how I want people dressing at my funeral. I want everybody dressed to the nines, looking their best, like right. Being themselves, even if it's outrageous, like some of those funeral looks, I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, very fashion forward. Um, even Bernadette, who is in mourning right now after the passing of her, I believe, husband, um, this looks great. <laughs> yeah, <know? laughs> she does. She looks incredible. This veil with the pearls, I was like, it, it's perfect. Like, it's so perfect because it's like. It's subtly dramatic, which is I feel like that was that's like who Bernadette is in this movie. Yeah, subtly dramatic is the best way to say it. <laughs> and so it was perfect. <laughs> I love it. And I love that Bernadette. I mean, clearly, if we were to do this film today, Terrence Stamp would be nowhere near this role. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's no. just it's not right. However, when I saw this for the first time years ago, when I was, you know, a kid, I thought I got like such a new respect for Terrence Stamp because I was like, I think of Terrence in um, that one horror film. Uh, oh, not not horror film, um, Haunted Mansion, <laughs> which is ridiculous. Oh, I've never seen that. <laughs> but also Star Wars and um, I believe one of the Superman movies. Like Terrence Stamp just seems like such a serious guy, you know? Yeah, I didn't realize that was him till I looked. So I looked this up on IMDb. Right. Um, yeah, because like well, when you first see her at the funeral, I thought it was whoever died, it was their mother. Right. <laughs> like that's who I thought this character was. And then I quickly realized, like, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> um I'm stupid. I actually thought that we were the first time I saw this, and for many years until recently, I thought we were mourning an actual trumpet. Which oh. I know, I know is ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. But when I saw the trumpet on the casket, <laughs> I literally was like, "This is yeah. so stupid. Why are we mourning a trumpet?" <laughs> no, 
Oh, that was his nickname because he probably <laughs> played a trumpet. I get it now. It, it took a while. <laughs> um, but I the, that scene makes me feel like there was a lot cut out from this movie. Yeah. Because I'm like... There I, actually was. I, I know I did read that they... After some audience viewings, they were told they cut a lot of parts out to make it shorter. So, Oh, that's unfortunate because there was a lot. I feel like I like the pacing of it was very strange, Mm -hmm. which I I do think is part of that, like kind of like British comedy of the 90s does have like very strange, slowish pacing. But then I'm also like, did I miss something? Like, I feel like I missed entire scenes every now and then, even though I know I did. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting film in a sense where they just like put you in this world and you just are supposed to like know what's going on real quick. So you have to do a little bit of jogging to catch up. With that being said, I still love it. Um, there's so many like traveling bus looks. So I just figured we'd just talk about them all at once. Just their different styles. Yes. Yes. Um, I personally love Adam's style. Guy Pierce's character. Yeah. <laughs> <It's just laughs> so fun and just so colorful. Sometimes wearing like no clothing or wearing like all the layers possible. You just <laughs> yeah. never know with Adam. Oh my gosh. You know who he reminded me of? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> he reminded me of our friend Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's so true. <laughs> like he really did. I just kept thinking of Brandon when he was ever on screen. I was like, huh. Reminds me of 100%, Brandon. Hundred <laughs> percent. You're so right. And then we have um Tick, who you know is Mitzi Delbra, also Hugo Weaving. Each of our characters have a lot of names in this mm-hmm. <laughs> film. Um, Tick is very like casual, I, very casual. He's, you know, he's a drag queen by night. So during the day, Tick is like, I'm putting on a sweater, some joggers and whatever. Like we got, got things to do. I like, I feel like he has this, like, if I'm not on stage, I want to be comfy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like that's his. <laughs> I appreciate philosophy, it. which I'm like, you know what? Good for you. Good for you. You wear some great looks that don't look comfortable. So, <laughs> right. And then Bernadette wears like very kind of airy, comfortable, very yes. feminine, very like beautiful. She is on um, trend. She is a coastal grandmother. Yeah. She, yes. like, <laughs> <laughs> if this came out nowadays, everybody would be like taking inspiration from her. Because yeah. she has the coastal grandmother look going on. Oh, yeah. Bernadette is on point, on trend, very chic. Um, just always on the bus, drinking little baby bottles of booze. Yes. Just, you know, <laughs> Bernadette's just living right now. She's without her husband now. She's ready to just travel the outback and just whatever, you know. <laughs> She's like, I need to live my life. I need to figure some things out as well. <laughs> Oh my gosh, all of her white, like, headscarf moments. I was like, yes, Bernadette, yes. So beautiful, so stunning. Um, After a card game, though, things start to get interesting. Um, Clearly, Tick loses a little bet with Adam, so they go about town in the most dramatic drag fashions they have. And I just figured we'd dive into this. I mean, first, Adam's look as Felicia is just absolute batshit crazy. It's like, it reminds me of like a Polly Pocket doll. That's what I was going to (laughs) say. Did you play with those two? I did. It reminds me of the, not, not like the actual like Polly Pockets that like had the cases and you would stick in the houses. It reminds me of like the two inch... Polly Pocket dolls that came out when we were kids. With and the like rubber clothing. Yes, with the rubber clothing <laughs> and the like insane hair. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> I used to go to my neighbor's house when she was like a little girl. Um, and I would like we would she was not so little in the sense that she was so much younger than me. I, I was like in middle school and she was like elementary school, whatever. Mm-hmm. 
and I used to play for Polly Pockets, and I used to remember like always accidentally like ripping the rubber clothing, yeah. and I'd be like, "Why?" <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> that was a real issue with those toys. The yeah. I was so careful. I th- I only ripped a couple pieces because I was very careful with my Polly Pockets. Of course you were. <laughs> of course you were. Um, but one of the looks that is one of my favorites, and I have some notes on. Is the thong dress, which I called the flip flop dress. And then I realized it makes a lot of sense that people outside of the US probably don't use the word flip flop. So I I had a little bit of a coming to moment when I'm like, thong dress? I don't see a thong. No. Oh, they're... they mean they mean flip flops. <laughs> they mean flip flops, yeah. <laughs> um, so the costume designer Tim, he actually talked about this look a little bit. So it says uh, the mod inspired costume consists of an arrangement of thongs and clever color choices and features a Chanel gold link chain uh, detailing at the top. Due to the tiny budget, Tim called on his mother's staff discount at Target to buy the materials for a hefty total sum of seven dollars for this little thong dress. That's incredible. It's insane. I'm like, hey, mom. Um, (laughs) Can I use your Target discount? That's crazy. And I love it. That is so wild. Yeah, this is a fantastic piece. It's just so fun. It's so fun. so fun. And Hugo Weaving, just, I don't know, something, he brings such a life to this character. And it just feels so joyous and positive Mm -hmm. and fun. Mitzi Del is on the streets just like saying hello to people and like this wackiest craziest look ever it's so fun yes like she does look like she's having the most fun in this look throughout the whole like even in the rest of the film i'm like this is the one this is the one she loves for sure but this look actually was not the original idea um originally the costume designers want to use credit cards um but american express actually declined them when they brought the idea to them which is for a second, I'm like, wait a minute, how are you going to afford this anyways? Mm-hmm. Um, but this went on to bring up the famous American Express credit card dress that happened at the Oscars that year. I was going <laughs> to say, I've seen this dress before. No context of who was wearing it or why. Right. So that is costume designer Lizzie, Lizzie Gardner. When she went to the Oscars with Tim, she was like, I'm going to make that freaking dress. And she called up American Express and she's like, can I do it now? Because it's on me and I'm going out in public and maybe winning an Oscar. And of course, American Express was like, well, okay. Um, So she wore that dress to the Oscars. It was very controversial. A lot of people were like, she's kind of making the joke of this whole thing. But she's a costume designer. So I don't know why it's confusing. uh, Yeah. But after the awards, she actually, um, let's see, that dress was actually auctioned off for $12,000 to raise funds for AIDS research right after. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Exactly. So I'm like, stop hating people. It's iconic. Yeah. This is pop culture at its best. <laughs> yeah. People need to calm down. Oh, my gosh. This was ridiculous. <laughs> Okay, so we have the silver lame dress on top of the Priscilla bus. And uh, Felicia is just living her best life on top of that bus. It's so good. I loved this. I loved this. Because first of all, I'm like, what are you doing on a moving... I mean, that's why she gets yelled yelled at. Because it's like, you're on top of a moving vehicle. What were you thinking? Bernadette's like, please stop immediately. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but Felicia looks so good. Like so good. It gives me like fifth element vibes a little bit, a little yes. like space opera vibes. Yes, space opera, absolutely. <laughs> um, one of the costume designers was talking about this dress actually. Um, and he said that they were getting ready to scrap the whole thing. He went up there with scissors because the director kept saying, like, it's way too long, it's not working, the wind's not working, we're gonna have to cut it. And Tim had the fabric in his hands, the silver lame with scissors. And suddenly the wind picked up and the whole thing flew up in the air. And the director was like, get out. We got to start filming right now. Everyone get, go. And the bus took off and they started recording and they got it. That's literally, amazing. 
had the fabric in his hands ready to cut the whole thing and they were like no go 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 <laughs> they're like never mind never mind <laughs> Uh, and I'm so glad it worked because it's one of my favorite like moments. It's so iconic. Oh, Whenever you look up this film, these are the pictures that come up. Uh, all good stuff. Until everyone, our crew gets stuck in the desert, of course. Um, saw this coming. I mean, come on. It's a road trip movie. You're going to get yeah. stuck in an outback. Yeah. As soon as he was like, let's take the shortcut. I was like, that's not going to be a shortcut. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> it do never it. is. It never is in a movie. <laughs> um, of course, Bernadette's over it. She can't spend another second with Tick and Adam. So she goes off out into the outback and plays a little game of naked and afraid and comes back with help. <laughs> I love when she was like, I'm going out to find the cavalry and I'm going to come back and save you. And I was like, I, I was like, I really hope she doesn't get stuck in the desert and they have to save her. I was like, that would be unfortunate. And no. she does. She does it. Like, yeah. but then they're super homophobic and leave them in the desert. <laughs> right. I was like, okay, that did nothing. Um, but yeah, Bernadette is like the heart and the strength of this film. If Bernadette's mm -hmm. going to do it, she's going to do it. But one of my favorite looks actually takes place when Tick is just out in the mountains rehearsing. Um, the I Will Survive number. It's so ridiculous. So Hugo Weaving's character is wearing that green dress, which I absolutely love. But Tim Chappell actually didn't love this dress. But the director actually really liked it a lot. He felt like he represented the glamorous drag side, while Tim felt like it was a little bit more like that kooky Aussie drag scene vibe. Either way, Tim didn't love the dress. I thought it was beautiful. It comprises a lime green sequin bodysuit with black brocade strips, a long boning, and cups and black fringe at the base. Above the bra cup sits silver iridesc iridescent sequin frill and shoulder straps. A lime green micro flamenco skirt with iridescent sequin frills complete the costume. So there's a lot going on. Um, this was one of the costumes where Tim said, if you get close to it, he said, don't get close to it. The oh, budget's no. real low. Uh, this thing is kind of like really just thrown together. However, on the film, it looks absolutely beautiful when, it does. Um, when he's Mitzi's up, up in, in the, the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. It works. It does the trick, you know, got to make it work. <laughs> Um, and before we get to break... Oh my gosh, this was incredible. My favorite scene, uh, the I Will Survive number. It's just so fun. It's just so great. An iconic moment. What do you think, Elizabeth? It's absolutely... First off, I was obsessed with their jumpsuits that have these like platform, like flat bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what you call that. But it's ridiculous and I love it because it looks, it just looks cool when they're dancing. Yeah. And then they have these incredible wigs, like. Which are made out of air fresheners, by the way. Oh, excuse me. Can you <laughs> say that again? <laughs> Tim said the headpieces were made out of air fresheners. I don't know what kind of air fresheners these are because I'm used to like. Me our little American, like, you know, pine like tree pine ones. Tree, yeah. <laughs> so maybe in Australia, they have cooler air freshers, but yeah, that's what Tim said. I, that's incredible. Um, I also love the guy they pick up to add yeah. <laughs> to their little impromptu performance. And he's just loving, loving his life. It's so fun. I, I could watch a scene over and over and over. I actually used to know the choreo to like the first like 45 seconds of it. <laughs> I couldn't I wish, do it now, but... Oh, I um, wish I had video of that. <laughs> yeah, it's such a fun scene. Um, and I know that these costumes in particular went on to like live in the musical as well. I believe they recreated like other versions of it for the musical, which you have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so good. And with that, Elizabeth, let's take a little dance break yes. and we'll be back for some more dance numbers. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Dan, audio engineer of the blogcast. Here to let you know that if you wanted to support the show, 
you can head over to theartofcostume.com slash podstore. There you can buy some awesome Tee Public merch with the Blogcast logo. We have shirts, sweaters, coffee mugs, stickers, and of course, a baby onesie. Thank you for all of your support. Welcome back, everyone. We are here for a uncomfortable bar scene, so we're just going to kind of gloss over the scene. However, um, our performers are in some pretty crazy looks here. Actually, they're kind of my least favorite looks because it just looks... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is where the, the low budget kind of shows up. It looks real thrown together. The wigs are all cheap. It's just a whole... <laughs> nightmare well, this whole bar scene is a mess <laughs> this whole bar scene is a mess and i do kind of feel because they were not expecting to do this right um <laughs> bob convinces them to do it um but i love i feel like they're almost trying to play to the crowd and like play down yeah <laughs> like what they're doing almost which does not doesn't happen no but bob's wife shows up i will say that her costume was kind of cool yeah, she looked great. Um, she, she looked great, but the scene didn't need to happen. Uh, no, her whole character didn't need to happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know whose idea this was, but I would like to have a conversation with them. Yeah. Uh, but we do have Bob, and Bob is a cool guy. Um, yeah. His costume says, like, you know, mechanic, but then something about his headband says, but I'm a cool mechanic. I don't I, know. I kind of feel like he's a little bit of a hippie, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. <laughs> <laughs> hippie bob we love hippie bob and so does bernadette they bring bob along on the travels yes because their bus keeps breaking down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the bus that they got from like a school or something um we have some more travel scenes uh felicia is once again on top of the bus but now it's pink and we're using this big old orange and yellow flag moment yes very beautiful yeah, I love that because I wasn't expecting there to be another like on top of the bus scene. Right. And then it's there just orange and yellow flying in the wind. Clearly the production figure they learned a lot from the first time they did this because this time the like <laughs> the fabric flowing behind Felicia is like kind of like a kite like flag yeah, moment. They just yeah. like put a flagpole behind her this time. <laughs> 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 they weren't going to risk it with the fabric in the wind. Um, but our performers finally make it to the beautiful hotel where Marion, uh, Tick's w wife lives. Yeah, that was, I was <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but once like, when the kid breaks down, I'm like, okay, this is, this makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. Um, and as you know, of course our performers are here for a very big performance mm -hmm. and I love the performance scene. It's so much fun. So many great costumes. Um, they talked about how in Australian drag, um, it's very often that their shows have like different scenes in it. There's like an intro, a middle, a conclusion, a finale. Um, so they kind of took that same idea into this performance where they had different little scenes within a song. Let's start with the flower looks for finally. It has some of my favorite looks. I love Bernadette's like, I don't even know what you call it. Like, it reminds me of an Alice in Wonderland flower. Yeah. That's so good. It just like it reminds me of like a tropical bird, <laughs> like right the like bright reddish orange and just like <laughs> the perp or the yellow plumes coming out. I was like, yes, Bernadette. <laughs> and Get credit it. to Terrence Stamp because Bernadette actually kills it with this lip sync. <laughs> I've yes. seen a lot of lip syncs in my life, and I'm like, Bernadette's killing it right here. <laughs> this is a legendary lip sync performance. <laughs> <laughs> I also love is is it I forget which who's in it the the yellow like corset with the flowers. So Felicia's in the yellow corseted look and they call it the waddle dress. 
Oh, I liked it. It looked good, especially with the wig they paired with it. Yeah, <laughs> very beautiful. Um, this is one of the looks Tim Chappell actually talked about. He mentioned that each pom-pom took an hour and a half, oh. which I guess that seems like a lot. But we've talked about a lot of different films, and it just seems like there's so many hours put into every costume that didn't really um, shock me as much. But what did shock me was that they thought that the pom-poms took so long that they actually brought the pom-poms to Long Bay Correctional Complex where some of the inmates actually worked on it. <laughs> oh like, my gosh. That's hilarious. Yeah, like, uh, you know, like free time arts and crafts project. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is why there I like it doesn't seem like there's even that many on them but I guess there is it's full of them I guess I mean it's it's the first project for both costume designers the budget is low all, all sorts of things but also Tim also talked about how rough this look was though for Guy Pierce because there's that moment where Guy slides down the high heel um, like the little slide in the background, mm -hmm. that slide was covered in sequins as well. And he said that the bare cheeked actor did not enjoy sliding down. <laughs> the sequins actually cut him up quite a bit. Ooh. And then once he finished, the director was like, let's do it again. And Guy Pierce was like, um, I don't know if I want to. He's like, or no, or <laughs> yeah. we could not. <laughs> or I would like to wear some pants, please. Um, this brings us to our next set of looks. Oh my gosh. The ostrich look. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it's so funny. I just cannot stop looking at these looks. And I don't know why, but my favorite is always Bernadette. Just her like facial expressions are just really selling this ostrich look. And because Especially because she just has like a straight face the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Tim Chappell also talked about these looks. And they said that the heads on what they were calling the alien look, which I was confused. I was like, these are emus. But then he went on to say emus later. Um, they said that these costumes did not survive. At least the heads did not because they were using them as cricket bats afterwards. Um, so, yeah, probably not a wise idea. Okay. <laughs> Which reminds me it's again. A random of, choice. <laughs> uh, they used, they did that in Alice in Wonderland, didn't they? They used birds to like hit golf balls or whatnot. Oh, yeah. The flamingos, I think. Yeah. So. I feel like someone was watching Alice in Wonderland a little too much when they were shooting these scenes. Um, and they're cheap costumes, so you know those heads popped right off. Oh, yeah. If you look closely, it looks like they're being held up by, like, duct tape at one point. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I'm like, I just can't believe this movie came together in an Oscar-worthy <laughs> Right. Yeah. I'm sure Colleen Atwood was like, how? <laughs> After doing Little Women and she didn't win the award, but she went on to win others. So, yeah. you know, um, my other favorite looks are like the Australian frilled lizard looks. Oh, my gosh. So the good. Lizards making a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> Mitzi Del Bra is selling this look in the case of the lizards. They have the tongues. Hugo Weaving was just feeling himself with this look, you could tell. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, it's so good. And just like the way the collar pops up and down, I was like, oh, that's so some good. like genius construction right there. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, but also like looking closely at it too, you can see how cheap the fabric is yeah. too though. Oh yeah. <laughs> like this is like plastic uh gift wrap from you know the 99 cent store. <laughs> it looks like that cheap like acetate lining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but it came out stunningly beautiful. So like who who am who I to judge? To ju yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean lower budget, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do and it worked out. And then we've we wrap up with the finale. The Sydney Opera House looks so beautiful. Oh, that's what it's supposed to be. I was thinking Little Bo Peep. <laughs> <laughs> no, so no, it, they said it was, now. <laughs> it was kind of like a Marie Antoinette vibe, but then they kind of uh, fixed it up for the Sydney Opera House, which I thought was super cool. 
That is so cool. I, I do love like how the hair department and costume department, you can tell they were like going back and forth, back and forth. Cause like, especially this one, like the hair just is always so perfect for what they're wearing. And I love that each of the performers have like their own little moment when like their hair lights up and then the camera changes to the next one. Mm -hmm. It was really cool because they each kind of had their moments. Uh, Bernadette had that flower look. Mitzi had the lizard look. Felicia had the bird look. So it all worked out in the end. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) And of course, like the audience, like, claps for them but like not really i was frustrated i was like that was one of the greatest scenes of all time haters (laughs) i know and i'm like i i feel like the only reason the crowd like didn't they didn't have the crowd like go crazy for them because i'm like what is his wife doing asking them to come perform if she didn't know like it was going to be like a big success she doesn't care she wants child care is what she wants that's (laughs) true that's true But um, I also think they did it that way so that he notices his son in right. the audience. <laughs> the, I loved them hiking up the mountain. Uh, Felicia said there's one thing she wanted to do and is hike to the top of a mountain in their favorite drag looks. And we got it. And it's so yes. beautiful. And it also like shows a lot about their personalities as well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Bernadette has this like very sophisticated like queen like look with the peacock feathers um, looking real serious but also like very sexy and cool mm-hmm. uh, Mitzi is very showgirl with the red these big like Las Vegas feathers <laughs> and then of course Felicia is just like showing all the skin whites pinks yellows every color you know <laughs> Felicia's just finally living her dreams She is. She really is. Um, Yeah, I loved this. I was like not practical at all with those headpieces, but I love it anyway. Oh my gosh. Is your cat being killed? No. (laughs) Arwen, we're trying to talk about Priscilla Queen in the Desert. Finally, it's happening to me right in front of my face, and I just cannot hide it. Okay, I've been let out. Okay, she's back. Um, yeah, overall, such a beautiful scene. I love seeing them all on top of the mountain. Yes. Some real great photos. I love them. I want prints of these photos, actually, that Elizabeth and I are looking at. It's just so cool. <laughs> And oh my gosh, the ABBA scene. Of course, we finally had to end with some ABBA. Um, we were talking about it the entire film, so uh, we went for it. Mitzi went back to one of like her classic Mitzi looks with like that brown curly hair and just a you know just a sequin top. I know, and um, I love Felicia's look. How he's just trying to be that one ABBA. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Woman. Like his obsession with Ava in this movie was creepy, I gotta say. It, <laughs> I, it went a little far for me, but I was like, okay. <laughs> I get it. Oh, I love me some Ava. Um yeah, Felicia is going straight for a direct Abba look. I don't remember the name of that specific uh performer because I am not good with names. However, this is a very recognizable Abba look to me though. Yes, it, it absolutely. So good. And Elizabeth, that brings us to the end of the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. (laughs) Yes. So much fun. I'm so glad we watched this, Um, especially at the beginning of Pride Month. It gives me so much joy, so much color. Um, I can watch this forever and ever, which I have. I have this on Blu-ray, so I watch this film all the time. (laughs) Just pop it, pop it in every now and then. Yeah. But before we go, we have to play one of our favorite games, Elizabeth. Spencer, are you ready? Let's do it. The one costume to rule them all. What is your one costume to rule them all, Spencer? This was hard. There was a lot of different costumes in this. Oh, yeah. It was hard to choose. Um, I actually changed mine a couple times. But I settled with uh, Mitzi Dobra's floral afro look during the i will survive number it's just like such a interesting silhouette that's like become so iconic with those big old platform pants the floral headpiece it's just so much fun the makeup is right 
I could watch the same forever and ever and ever. It's so good. That is definitely a good choice. Uh, my one costume to rule them all was Mitzi's chandelier look. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm a pr- impressed they made it on that budget. And I feel like it also says a lot about the character and like where they are in their life. Because like Mitzi is like going through it with like reuniting with his wife, like kind of like getting to know his kid for the first time and just like feeling very insecure. And I'm like, yeah, he does feel like someone dressed in a ridiculous chandelier in the middle of a hospital. <laughs> like, All right. And I also love that's like Mitzi's idea of what Mitzi probably thought she looked like, you know, like in these yes. fantasy numbers yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a good choice, Elizabeth. I, I, I respect it real good. Spencer, though, what are what are we watching next week? Um, we could not be doing a more different film next week than what we are about to do. We are going from the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and we're traveling to, what is this, Iceland? Mm-hmm. For the brand new film, The Northman. And whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say is whoa. In true Art of Costume broadcast, we did a 180. <laughs> and man, was it a 180. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited to talk about it, though. I just saw it uh, the other night, and I haven't talked to Elizabeth about it, so I have a lot of thoughts and feelings on w- same, what same. the hell I just watched. <laughs> Everybody, get you to a theater, <laughs> watch The Northmen, <laughs> And give us your honest thoughts and opinions. That's all I can say. Yeah, I, I want to know. I want to know what everyone thought because I still don't know how I felt about it. <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon. Hit up our podcast store. Get yourself a t-shirt, a sweatshirt. We have some great Patreon episodes coming out soon, which mm-hmm. uh, you'll have to check out. And of course, don't forget to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcast. And you can rate us on Spotify now. So I appreciate some yes. stars there too. Yes. If you liked what you heard, please give us a little five-star text review. We would greatly appreciate it. And everybody have a fantastic week. Bye. The Art of Costume broadcast is hosted and produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams. Our audio engineering and editing is done by Dan White. Follow us on Instagram at the Art of Costume Pod or visit the Art of Costume Blogcast.com for all broadcast updates. If you want to support the show, go to the Art of Costume.com slash pod store. Or you can head over to patreon.com slash the art of costume for some bonus content. For more costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, head over to the art of costume.com, a blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design. I don't. Oh. <coughs> I don't care if the sun don't shine to get my loving in the evening time when I'm with my baby. Ready, Elizabeth? I'm ready. (laughs) 